In 2016, bass singer Son Tae-jin, also known as TJ Son, participated in an audition program on a local TV channel looking to form a classical crossover vocal group. He eventually won along with three others and formed a group called Forte di Quattro, or The Power of Four. Since then, he has been busy performing as part of his group and also as a solo performer. He has collaborated with the K-pop artists as well as musicians of traditional Korean music as well. He has had a new song released recently and an upcoming solo concert in July called One Summer Night. I'm glad to say that he has joined us in the studio today for this week's Touch Basins Hall. Welcome to the show. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> um, for all the fellow listeners out there, my name is Son Tejin, also known as TJ because my English name is TJ. Mm. And uh, currently I'm a member, I'm a base of Forte di Quattro, yes. Mm. Nice to meet you all. Yes, I understand. This is your first English interview that you said yes, before when it came on air. It's, uh, it's my first actual English, I mean, interview in English. Right. And, I mean, after I graduated high school, I've never really spoken in English. Cause so. You gradu- so you were in Singapore as you were growing up? Yes. I, uh, I lived in Singapore for about 16 years, mm. 15, 16 years. So since then... I've been trying to learn Korean instead of English. So now, uh, I'll, I'll get there. I'll come back once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, you sound, your English sounds perfect uh, from where I'm oh, sitting. Thank you. Let's uh, look back at your career. Although your fans will probably already know your mm-hmm. story. Can you share with our listeners how you began singing? Um, well, music has been with me my whole life. Uh, my parents love music. They love classical music and pop and everything. Uh, but so, uh, so luckily... Because of them, I I was innately like uh, not tone deaf, if mm. you know what I mean. So I was I sang at a uh, at a young age, and it was probably during high school when I actually got interested in singing, because you know it it was mandatory for us to uh, take an arts or a music class. So I did choir for mm. my own convenience, mm. and. Uh, I came across a college professor, a choral conductor, who uh, encouraged me to major in vocal. Mm. But during then, I was rather interested in hotel management. And I actually got in Mm. to a French uh, college called Vatel. Mm. But um, when I came back to Korea, there was this God-given opportunity to apply for Seoul National University Mm. as a classical vocal major. And... Really, luckily, I got in, and that's how I actually just started to sing as a as my major. Right, yeah. right. Then, how did you end up participating in a TV audition program? What drove you to uh, make that decision to try and apply there? So, uh, during my college years, I was basically singing all the classical opera mm. related songs and everything. It was more based on opera instead of this crossover genre. Mm. But uh, it was in the army. Mm. I went to uh, an ar- I, I served in an army band, mm. and that's when I came across this whole group singing quartet thing, mm. and uh, I sang different kinds of songs. And I realized that singing in front of an audience, like uh, if they enjoyed the stage, mm. it's a lot more fulfilling for myself. Mm. So I was. I was just thinking to myself, oh, why not just sing all kinds of different music in my own style and do what I love to do? So, and I came across this audition program, which is just the right fit for me. Um, I'm not like a high tone singer, so I could just, you know, just just budge in a little and then sing the lower parts in a way. As a bass singer, Uh uh, uh, it must be difficult for for, uh, for a little bit in Korea, especially because most people, when they think of uh, uh, male singers, they think of tenors. Right, right. Uh, But uh, as a bass singer, I'm guessing you need to, uh, I mean, it's easier to be in a group rather than trying to forge uh, your own solo career as such. Um, Well, I think it's like a Korean tradition thing nowadays. Mm. Um, bolting out like all the high notes mm-hmm. and then singing out loud uh maybe because of the karaoke tradition if you know what i mean <laughs> but still yeah. uh for me that was one point that i had uh, uh that was one big obstacle that i had to go through mm. um 
So I had to make my own kind of music, my own, just singing with the low notes, mm. like Frank Sinatra maybe. Right, uh, right. So I guess nowadays I'm trying to find my own uh, feel, the music that I can uh, just play along with, and that's that's probably still the hardest part to uh, cross over. Right. That must be. The big difference mm-hmm. between uh, singing in your group, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Forte di Quattro, mm-hmm. and then also singing by yourself for right. your own solo career, right? Exactly. Uh, when we are as a team, we can't really stand out individually. Mm-hmm. So I would have to, um, you know, just uh, do what I can do best and support each other while we sing. Mm. That makes the team and that makes our music possible, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now that you have uh, this, uh, after this audition program, mm-hmm. you, your career has exploded and you're yes. uh, collaborating with a variety of musicians, mm-hmm. including like Prodigy of the Korean traditional music, uh, Song Song Yi. Oh, what yes. kind of process do you go through when working with artists from different backgrounds? I mean, is it different from when you're working with your fellow classical musicians? Um, I don't, I didn't really have a problem with uh, Song Song Yi, but. Mm. Since we are two different, very unrelated genres, mm. um, we were rather careful and very uh, considerate of each other. Um, and you know how people claim to say that music is a universal language in a way. Um, so we did our part. I had to... Um, um, oh, the word's not picking up. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. So... When I sang with Song Soo Yi, mm. we did what we do best. Mm. She did what she did best. Mm. And uh, we started to be a little bit more... Uh, we hear each other's voices and basically yield into the music together as a whole. Mm. So it was the whole... The biggest thing that I had to do was to adapt to her music and she had to adapt to mine. Mm. So that created our... Uh, music as a duet uh, we went to uh, we took part in a KBS show called mm. and uh, it came out well <laughs> I think <laughs> I mean it must be amazing to be sitting here and uh, collaborating with all these artists mm-hmm. and having this uh, this strong music career now right. I mean did you always believe that you could get it did you always believe that you'd win this show as well no um, a lot of my friends uh, we took part in the audition program together mm. but our first initial goal was just to get in the top 100. Mm. But then, you know, as the episodes went through, as the competition went through, we got we got a little bit more greedier in a way. <laughs> I mean, why not just win this whole thing if we have the chance? Just mm. do our best, make great music, and um, thankfully a lot of people loved our music and the show itself as well. Yeah. Let's talk about your uh, upcoming concert. Uh, you have a solo concert called One Summer Night. Yes. And from what I heard, you are greatly involved in preparing the planning of this concert oh, yourself. Yes. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I don't really have like a certain goal mm. for this concert, but I'm still at a place where I have to introduce myself to the uh, audience that uh, this is me. Uh, this is crossover music. This is what I think my music will be for the rest of my life. And uh, it's a stage where I can prove myself of who I am, what I can do, and also just test the limits that, um, uh, test the limits of myself. Yeah. Mm. The concert, you know, uh, sold out within minutes of going on sale. Uh, you yourself posted on social media accounts saying that you failed to obtain tickets. I mean, you were trying uh, to buy your own tickets. Don't you get <laughs> well, a share of tickets um, that you, I, know, you can just give VIP passes to people that you need to? I I did. I just tried. Yeah, I, I posted it on social media, but um, I tried to get the first few rows of the concert, but right, right. that didn't really work out well. Um, <laughs> I wasn't skilled enough. Mm. But uh, how does it make you feel that uh, your fans, you know, love you so much, and you know your mm. concert gets sold out so quickly? Well, it's I, it's unbelievable still that I'm just being loved by so many uh, fans, and um, I just feel that I. 
I'm just utterly grateful for them because they are the ones who are making this stage possible, making mm. this concert possible. Mm. Because of them, I'm able to sing. I'm able to release new music if I can. Um, these opportunities are basically made by them. So I'm, I'm rather thankful for them instead of like for myself. Yeah. And can you briefly talk about this new single, o r u g o l or Music Box? I think mm-hmm. is the English title. Yeah. Can you tell us, uh, introduce us to this song? Um, I won't. speak a lot about this song yet because I'm trying to leave this a little bit more um, uh, Do you want people to hear the song? You, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, I'll rather want them to hear the song and then feel uh, You know how uh, music applies differently to different people mm-hmm. and um, this song uh, was uh, composed by a uh, famous pianist slash uh, singer-songwriter called Jung Dong-hwan mm. uh, from Mellow Monks mm. and l y r i c s The lyricist was a famous. Uh, she's she wrote songs for Song s h i y o u n g and a lot of famous songs, Yang Jae Sun, and um, it's a beautiful yet very. People tend to say that it sounds pretty, but it's so sad in mm, a way. Mm. So it might apply differently for you, and it depl- uh, applies differently for me as well but the whole music box concept came from from whatever we do it always starts we open the box we uh and then we close the box Mm. so even love our life and everything um it's just uh mm, like an open-minded song for Mm. everyone to listen Mm. yeah i'm glad to say that tj has recorded an exclusive rendition of this song here in this studio. Mm. We'll be playing it a bit at the end of today's show. The video of that recording will be uploaded onto our YouTube page and on our website, world.kbs.co.kr. So you should definitely check that out. Any final words? Uh, What's anything uh, upcoming other than the concert? And what do you plan to do for the rest of the... Hopefully by the end of the year, I'm planning to uh, make my uh, first mini album. And uh, please... uh, 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 just, uh, and also our third album for our team as well, Forte mm. di Quattro. Hopefully, uh, it's all under preparation, and then hopefully we'll uh, we'll see you guys at the end of the year of our third con- third album tour. Yeah. Well, certainly something to look forward to. Thank you uh, so much. Tejin, thank you for coming in today. We really appreciate uh, you making the time and it was a pleasure to meet you. Good luck for the concert and your albums and everything else going forward. My pleasure. Thank you so much.